Hey guys, Dr. Sill here, Junior Doctor from Sydney, Australia, very interested in mental health and in today's video, we're going to do a reaction to an old psychiatry teaching film uh, interviewing someone with uh, hebephrenic schizophrenia, which is the term they use for uh, disorganized schizophrenia. I was told that this is actually acting, uh, but I think they do a really good job of acting, so I thought it'd still be really useful to comment about some of the kind of signs and symptoms that I see, and we can have a little bit of a discussion about schizophrenia as well. Now, I am an intern, not a psychiatry consultant by any means, but uh, hopefully there is some interesting things that I can still help share with you guys. All right, let's get into the video. But actually, first up, let's talk a bit about schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is chronic psychosis. It's, uh, it occurs because of a mix of genetic issues plus psychosocial triggers that cause the illness, and it's characterized by psychosis. It's basically a group of symptoms, and those symptoms include positive symptoms, which often auditory hallucinations and delusions, where you have fixed false beliefs that are impossible and not true but you can't change your mind about them and obviously visual hallucinations where you you hear things that are f like like how you're hearing me now but there's no there's no one there okay so it can be extremely distressing schizophrenia is one of illnesses in the world that causes the most morbidity so it's it's a really devastating condition there's also negative symptoms that you can have in schizophrenia and so that this is things like poverty of thought and poverty of speech associated with that so when you talk to them there might be some thought delay before they speak and when they do speak they speak very little because there's just not a high level of thought occurring and finally there's disorganized thinking that can occur as well the cognitive symptoms and this is essentially when the logical flow of thought is interrupted and actually you get um, very disorganized thinking. And, and often that's what hebephrenic schizophrenia is. It's, it's when people don't answer your question in a way that makes any sense to you. And it's because that then the natural logical flow of thought is, is absent in their minds. You say something and instead of having what you would think is a normal response, their brain jumps to something else completely unrelated sometimes. And it's a spectrum and this is a video about that. So let's chuck on the headphones and watch it. It's beginning. Tell me, why did you come to the hospital? To teach. To teach. What do you teach? Toilet training one years. Hmm? Have you started teaching here at the hospital? Through urine tests. Pardon? Urine tests. What were you doing before you came to the hospital? I was studying biorhythm. Here in Bloomington? Or were you in another city or in another state? ST. I used opened opened the tea bags. I'm going to pause there. There's a couple of interesting things that have happened so far. So when you see a patient, you start doing what's called a mental state examination as a psychiatrist. And it's essentially like the physical exam of a sick person, but it's actually an observational exam of anyone. Anyone can have a mental state examination performed on them. And you start with appearance. So she's actually, you know, reasonably well groomed. Let's go back to her. Yeah, reasonably well groomed. She doesn't look like, um, like, like she hasn't showered in years or something like that. She's dressed appropriately. Uh, she's sitting comfortably and laid back um, and her hair doesn't seem too disheveled or anything like that. Then the next thing you talk about is behavior. So far is pretty appropriate. It's still early days. You can't make a good assessment of behavior yet, but um, we'll keep going. Speech is the next thing. She seems to be pretty monotonous, but slow rate. And then we're getting to thought, but before thought there's mood and affect. Now mood is essentially how someone feels when they report it to you, which she hasn't been asked what her mood is. You should always ask what someone's mood is and also rate that out of 10. And affect, which is how someone looks. And at the moment, it kind of looks maybe slightly blunted, like not large range of emotion, but maybe a little bit flatter than that. And then you talk about thought and already we are seeing some very interesting thought signs. So what are you doing here teaching Teaching what? Urine studies or something. Urine tests, she said. So teaching, thats whether that's true or not, it might not be true, which might class it as a, a, as a delusion, but it's an appropriate, like, realistic answer. But then what we just saw is she said something like ST and then talked about T. 
I used opened opened the tea bags. Okay, now we can talk about her thought, which has been pretty interesting so far, because she was asked, what state are you from? She said ST, and then she talked about tea bags, which has nothing to do with ST, and I don't even know if ST is a state in the United States. So when you use something from a previous sentence and you use that to talk about something unrelated, like ST and then tea bags, that's called tangentiality. So you're using one thing from this sentence and you're going off onto a different topic using something from that sentence and you don't find your way back, tangentiality. If you use that and then you kind of discussion, you're talking about tea bags and then blah, 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 and you find your way back to answer the question, that's circumferentiality, but she just had, had a tangential response. Bags. Have you been hearing voices telling you to do things? I, I know what the voice box is used for. Can you tell me? Hot and cold. What does that mean? I don't understand. Through air conditioning. What was... What? Her vocal cords were used straightforward. Do you sometimes feel as though you're a robot? That is a Jehovah's Witness, yes. Is it? Can you read people's minds? Blueprints only. Where do you get the blueprint? From filling applications. Okay, you can start to get a strong sense that the thought process is extremely disordered. It's hard to expect those answers, that they're not kind of traditional answers to those questions, and sometimes they don't even answer the question. Not quite word salad. Word salad is the term used when if you ask a question, someone just says random sounds or words. And you know, when schizophrenia is extremely severe, that can happen. She's still saying words and they could be loosely related to the question. Like, I could, can you read thoughts, blueprints only? Kind of might make sense if it's like thought blueprints. I'm not sure about that. She's definitely derailing a lot in her responses. The psychiatrist is asking really like cleanly important questions you have to ask about those symptoms we talked about with schizophrenia, the auditory hallucinations, and specifically command hallucinations. Do you hear voices that tell you to do things? And if you hear voices that tell you to do things and they're telling you to do bad things like harm others, that's a red flag, okay? That's a high risk situation. And uh, you have to take that, you have to treat that like differently than you would treat someone who has visual hallucinations that are just commentating on what they're doing with their day. Or you're picking up a cup of coffee, or you're making a phone call, uh, that kind of thing. So you can risk assess. Can you tell what people are thinking without them actually saying it? IT. Hmm? I never have done that. It. That. It. That. Well, have you ever heard your thoughts broadcast so as though they were coming over a loudspeaker or over a television? Symptom of schizophrenia. Like a mic? Mike. Okay, tell me about that. Two. Mike is two. Girls, 14. So that sentence had no logical flow. Do you feel people put thoughts into your mind? I would have called that word salad. Thought insertion, another symptom of um, psychotic symptom of schizophrenia. This feeling of thought process is eliminated now. Was woman's active political party? Yeah, complete derailment. Are you a These are yes or no person? questions. And it, religious, religious means to wear glasses or spectacles. Has anyone ever put thoughts into your mind? Only the television. When? Okay. Can you tell me about that? When the 
So this is a question about ideas of reference, which is another um, symptom of psychosis. And that is when uh, someone sees signs that are directed to them in, in things that, like in a newspaper or on the television. Um, and it looks like this is mixed with thought insertion, where the television is planting ideas into her mind. If this is acting, she's doing an excellent like job, to be honest. And the television does that? Mm. No. How is the television able to do that? They have very intricate tools. And they can put thoughts into your mind? It's possible. So the clip with this young woman ends here. Um, there's so much more to talk about in a, a review of, uh, of someone with these symptoms. You need to do more in the risk assessment area. But it's hard to get any answer out of them. Even on yes or no questions, there was complete derailment and illogical answers. It was hard to gauge the content of what, what the response was. So that, this would be a really tricky situation. So I hope this video was interesting. If you enjoyed it, you can consider leaving it a like. That helps the video be shared with other people. You can subscribe to the channel. You can shout me a coffee on Patreon. By the way, first 15 people or 25 people, sorry, on Patreon, I'll do a one-on-one -on -one call with them for 15 minutes. So if you wanna have a quick chat, that'd be lovely. If I missed any symptoms, or you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until the next video, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.